G'day kids. Thanks for tuning in to another Aussie episode. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that way you won't miss out on any of the new videos we put out and it would certainly make my day. In the meantime, enjoy this video. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Today, we are super lucky because we get to meet Matt Levy, a five-time Australian Paralympic swimmer. That's right, you heard me correctly. He has competed at five different Paralympics. It's simply amazing. Now, Matt has won nine Paralympic medals and is an absolute Australian champion. Matt has also competed at multiple national competitions and world championships, winning over 20 international medals. He's held over four records and been awarded the Order of Australian Medal, or the OAM, and he's also written a book, all of this on top of working full time. It seems like Matt can achieve anything that he puts his mind to, and he's certainly making the most of life. So come on kids and grown ups, let's meet Matt Levy and find out just how he achieves so much success and how Matt likes to stay keen. G'day Matt, Ozzy here, how are you? Yeah, great. Thanks. It's uh, great to be part of the part of the show, mate. Thank you so much for for giving us your time. Now, Matt, for those kids that don't know you, you are an Australian swimmer, a very successful swimmer, I might add, as part of the Aussie Paralympic team, and you've just returned home from competing at the Tokyo Olympics. Um, congratulations on another successful campaign. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's um been great. It's um yeah great to. Um, do well in my fifth, fifth games and yeah it's just really great to be back in Australia we've been away for a, for a little while now um, but yeah great to be back on uh, home soil and uh, getting um, yeah getting uh, used to I guess all the restrictions we have in, in Sydney. Yeah it's a different uh, a different sort of world we're living in right now mate and uh, you, I can see you, you're sitting in a hotel room so, so you're currently in quarantine? Yeah so I'm in um, uh, a quarantine that's um, part of uh, mandatory um in australia and yeah i've um, been in here for about a week i've um, got about a week to go all right now matt you've also written a book and i'd love to start with a quote from very early on in the book i must say i haven't read the whole book yet but i can't wait to finish it but i did pick up one quote and it simply says when you've grown up as i have you realize every day is a gift so you better make the most of it so Matt, can you just give the kids a brief overview of what you had to endure as a child and why that outlook on life helped you get through the, the many challenges and has set you up for a very successful life? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess I was born really early, uh, back in 1987, so I'm 34 uh, years of age and I was born with um, a vision impairment, so I can't see very well, um, and, uh, and cerebral palsy, which uh, affects my balance and coordination and uh, and um, a few other things. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess I kind of started off pretty tough. And uh, yeah, I guess I've had a lot of operations early on as well um, and still to do today. Uh, so I guess like kind of that early on upbringing and um, I guess what I've had to endure has helped me, I guess, see things for what they are and I guess take <clears throat> opportunities, uh, take the opportunities that I have been given uh, to me and not, I guess not take them for granted and uh, yeah really kind of like I guess make the most of what I've what I've got. Yeah Matt it's um, it's a really great outlook on life and you say that you take the opportunities that you've been given but I think it's fair to say that you've gone out and created your own opportunities. Um, it's easy for someone to to sit back and say well you've been dealt a pretty hard um, uh, pretty bad hand and and not to go out and pursue the things you have, but you've chosen a pretty difficult path in becoming a professional swimmer. Um, you've completed an MBA, uh, you work full time on top of all that. You've written a book. Uh, it's fair to say that you've you've not just um, taken opportunities, you've created them and you've gone and tackled life and, and created a, a fantastic life for yourself, mate. So congratulations for that. And hopefully the kids watching today can take a lot of inspiration from that. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, 
yeah, it's certainly been fun, um, fun and enjoyable so far. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's um, yeah been a bit of a journey. Absolutely, mate. Um, so you mentioned a few operations. Uh, I read somewhere that you've had somewhere in the vicinity of 50 operations, 40 of those uh, roughly were before the age of 13. Um, that is a huge amount of operations. But fast forward to years later, here we are. Um, I'm chatting to you today, you're a five time Paralympic swimmer, uh, an international superstar, one of Australia's most successful Paralympic swimmers. Matt, how did you choose swimming and what age were you when you first started? Yeah, I think I, um, I guess swimming chose me. Uh, I was started swimming uh, health reasons for therapy um, back really early on uh, and it kind of grew from there and uh, I, I watched the Sydney Paralympic Games in 2000 and that's kind of where I got the burning desire to do it more than just swimming up and down and swimming for, for, for therapy and fitness and uh, yeah I guess from that day I kind of decided to have a goal and wanted to make I wanted to make Paralympic Games and um, yeah I had to kind of work out how to get there and what to do and and all that kind of stuff and it was really about coming up with a plan to get to that end goal and uh yeah learn learn new skills and and train a bit and uh get faster and all that kind of stuff uh and uh yeah it was um yeah it's been a bit of a journey uh i guess i never kind of thought i'd be going to five uh games and let, let alone well i only thought i'd be going to one so let alone five uh and yeah it's um definitely been a journey and a, and a process and yeah it's just really about taking uh one step at a time and um yeah making the most of it absolutely mate you mentioned there the 2000 olympics was there a particular moment during those olympics or the paralympics uh in sydney 2000 or a particular athlete that uh, inspired you and you said i want to be just like them and become a paralympic swimmer um yeah not really i guess it was more watching the whole being so close i guess uh, as Australians, um, watching the games and watching what was happening, like it was, uh, I guess that kind of moment and that kind of realization that um, really kind of opened it up to me wanting to do it. Um, not so much, I guess, a particular athlete or a particular event. Um, it's just yeah, the whole whole spectacle of the games, um, Paralympics and Olympics, uh, and yeah, I guess it's the whole whole journey of the and the atmosphere. Yeah, excellent, mate. It's it's contagious watching the Olympics and the Paralympics. Um, what does it take, Matt, to become a Paralympian? Um, what kind of training are we looking at? How many days a week? How many hours a day do you train? Um, yeah, so it's four hours a day, two hours in the morning, two hours at night, uh, and uh, over over six days. Um, so yeah, close to thirty six or so hours per week, um, if you include like massage and physio and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, full time work um yeah it's very very busy <laughs> yeah it certainly does sound very busy and a lot of people the grown-ups watching this um struggle just to manage a full-time job let alone with four hours of training a day on top of that matt so um inspiring for the kids and for the grown-ups out there um to see what you've been able to achieve what would you say um to young kids out there with cerebral palsy or vision impairment or any kind of disability that want to get into swimming and, and maybe start doing it competitively yeah, I guess it's really about having a passion, having a belief in yourself. And I think, uh, yeah, you can do anything if you set your mind to it. Uh, I guess at the very beginning, you're not going to be very good, um, but it's really about, I guess, chipping away and understanding that, uh, yeah, it's not going to be easy. Um, and yeah, just kind of working out <clears throat> where um, where your strengths are and then where your weaknesses are and kind of going from there. But um, yeah, as long as you, I feel, feel as long as you have a passion and a desire to do something, you can do whatever you want to do. It's a great message for the kids, Matt. You don't necessarily have to be good to start. Um, everyone starts in the same place and those that are willing to work harder than the others are generally the ones that succeed. So thanks for sharing that message, Matt, with the kids. Yeah, no worries. Um, now, speaking of kids, we've got a few fans out there, mate. And uh, we've got a question from one little fan. Now, I know that you do a lot of different swimming strokes in the various um, events or races that you do. Now, I've got a question here from Charlie. She's eight years old and she's from Sydney and she says, what's your favourite stroke? Um, I think freestyle is my favourite stroke. Um, for me, I guess it's always been the easiest one to do. Uh, and 
yeah, I guess it's the hardest stroke in a way because it um, a lot of everyone can do it pretty much. So, um, but yeah, for me, I guess it's always been the most natural stroke to do. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been in many relays when I did freestyle. So uh, yeah. Many successful relays too, Matt. Yeah. Now, as you mentioned, you're a Paralympian, not just once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but five times. Um, it's a, a very uh, incredible milestone, incredible achievement. But what's even more incredible is that during your Paralympic career, you've won quite a few medals. Am I correct in saying that you've won nine? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Very good. I've got three count. gold, one silver and five bronze in my little uh, research list here. But do yeah. you have a favourite, Matt? Um, I think for me, the relays have always been up there on my list. I think they've been the ones that uh, I've enjoyed the most um, competing with, uh, throughout that team members. And um, uh, and yeah, like knowing that you have to perform so they could perform and, and vice versa is pretty, pretty special. And uh, the individual races are pretty cool, um, but the, you do them solo. You obviously represent your country and, um, and and all that when you're standing in the blocks. But the relays, you're more more just representing your country, representing the teammates that you're competing with. Um, so um, yeah, I think the relays definitely um, stand uh, above, I guess, what other events I've done. That's really cool, mate. So um, I've had a, a few other chats with um, uh, um, some Olympic swimmers, and they've also said that the the relays or the team events are the ones that they hold dearly um, to their, and close to their heart because it's, I guess it, it's because you're part of a team, right? Is, am I correct in saying that? Yeah, I think so. And I, I just made that extra little bit more than um, than the individual events. And uh, yeah, you, you're um, not just competing for yourself, but you're competing with your for your teammates as well. Yeah, that's right. Now, mate, you've uh, not just competed at the Paralympics, you've also competed at multiple world championships, national competitions, you've won upwards of 20 international medals, you've had four world records in your career, plus you've been awarded the Order of Australia medal. Now that's a lot of uh, things to have achieved in your uh, 34 years, but do you have a career highlight, something that's stood out as the, the most incredible achievement for you? Um, yeah, I think uh, being awarded the OAM is pretty special. Um, I guess the Sickness Fire Service is a sport and uh, is, I guess, known in Australia uh, as, as an honour order. Uh, and I think, yeah, that definitely stands out um, to me uh, as one of the biggest achievements that I've had to, that I've, that I've been given. Uh, and yeah, just, I guess, also seeing the young ones coming through from when I started in 04 um, to now, um, seeing, I guess, the um talent coming through and the swimmers and uh yeah hopefully leading by example with with my performances and that kind of stuff as well uh and yeah it's um been pretty cool to kind of see how it's growing from um zero four to, to 20. yeah absolutely um so zero four was uh athens olympics and then there's been uh london rio Tokyo, I'm missing Beijing. one in there, aren't I? Beijing. Beijing, of course. Do you have a favourite Olympics out of all of those? Uh, I think they're all different for different reasons. Uh, uh, Athens um, was pretty cool because of my first games. Uh, Beijing was pretty awesome because my first, my first medal. <laughs> London um, was my best results in terms of medal haul. Uh, Rio was, was special in terms of culture and uh, I guess it was a rebuilding phase as well for the swimming team. Um, and yeah, um, Tokyo just passed was was, was special because um, it was my fifth fifth games and um, we managed to win the relay and uh, did well in my individual swims as well. So they're all, I guess, different for different reasons. And um, yeah, no one kind of really stands out. Fair enough, mate. Now you've done the five. Are we going to see, what's the future hold? Are we going to see Matt in uh, Paris 2024? Um, take it year by year. Definitely come off games next year. Nice. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll see how it kind of pans out. I guess you don't want to be that athlete that gets tapped on the shoulder and tell them, <laughs> tell, telling that you're not fast enough this year. So um, yeah, in, in Paris, I'll be 37. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty old. But I think as long as you enjoy it, as long as you're having fun and passionate about what you're doing, 
you can achieve anything, but um, I guess you have to be comfortable with what you're doing as well to be able to achieve. Absolutely, mate. Age is just a number, Matt. 37. Yeah. Right. You might have a few grey hairs coming through by then, but hey, you, yeah, proved probably. That, you proved that age is no barrier. 17 at your first Olympics. Sounds nice to have, you know, your, your sixth Olympics at the age of 37. Um, so who knows, mate? You take it one yeah. by year, year by year and see where uh, where your career takes takes you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, Matt, um, there's a lot of races in that career of yours, but I just want to know: Do you have any pre-race rituals? Anything that you like to do before every race? Um, yeah, really. It's just like really about remembering why I'm there and really taking a deep breath. And uh, I guess I'm always nervous. You always you always have self doubts. When you're about to stand on the blocks but um for me i guess it's always remembering all the training that i've done and i remember being, i guess it's the fun part of 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 the sport um you don't have to train 5ks per session or 4ks per session you're only swimming 100 meters 200 meters or 50 meters uh so it's pretty easy um but i think that's where i guess the the highest stress level and the most uh, doubt comes in to um, for an athlete. Um, so for me, I guess it's really about um, trying to stay focused and, and trying to enjoy the moment. Uh, and uh, and yeah, just um, try and have fun. It's good, mate. It's a common thread um, through all of your messages there. It's about enjoyment and having fun, whether you're training, setting goals uh, and during races. Um, so um, hopefully if there's, if there's one thing that the kids can take out of this chat today, it's just about just really having fun in everything that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, um, I guess, yeah, there's obviously hard work in that, in that fun, but, um, I think if you have a passion for it, if you believe in it, um, it, it um, makes it a lot, a lot easier to, to do and, and doesn't feel like a chore. Very good. Now, is it true, Matt, that you like to have a shot of beetroot 90 minutes before the race? Uh... I, haven't, I didn't do that in Tokyo, but yeah, I, I've had um, beetroot, uh, I think they're called beetroot shots. Um, okay. So there's concentrated beetroot, basically. Um, what does uh, beetroot do for you? It's meant to like increase your, help you increase your aerobic capacity naturally. Okay. Um, and helps, I guess, uh, gives you a bit of energy as well. But um, I guess, yeah, mainly kind of helps, um, helps with, um, your aerobic stores and your aerobic capacity when you're competing. Good to know. I'm going to go and start <laughs> drinking beetroot shots. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, Matt, we've got another question from a little fan who loved to watch you and, and the rest of the team swim in Tokyo. Now, this is from Angus. He's only five years old from Sydney, and he wants to know, can you swim faster than a shark? Um, never had that experience, so I hope I would be swimming faster than a shark but um yeah we'll um have to find out one day hopefully i don't find out for yeah a very very long time <laughs> let's let's hope we don't have to find that one out no good yeah little, good little question from curious little five-year-old gussie there can we just focus on the tokyo paralympics um how is it different from the other paralympics that you've been to i mean obviously it was surrounded by covid um how did that impact you know the village and just getting around and, and having to deal with no crowds etc yeah i think it was, it was yeah obviously very different we um weren't allowed to go to the dining hall so the food place where we where everyone eats and um, we had to have food delivered to us and and given to us in our in our uh accommodation okay. and um we had um COVID tests every day uh we had to check our temperature um we had to monitor i guess if for any COVID symptoms uh, and we had to obviously wear masks like everyone does now. Uh, and yeah, um, but apart from that, it was pretty much the same, same. But um, yeah, we, we went there and raced. We um, stood on the box and um, won a couple medals. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, um, yeah, we um, had to we had a lot of COVID protocols in place to keep us safe and keep us healthy. And um, as far as I know, everyone came back COVID free, which is good. Very good. And, uh, and as part of that COVID plan, you're currently sitting in quarantine, as I mentioned before, um, to keep you safe and, and make sure that everyone else in the team is is safe on return from, from Tokyo and hasn't brought any COVID back with them. But how yeah. are you keeping yourself busy in there in quarantine? 
Um, well, I'm working um, during the day, which is good. Uh, and um, well, your holiday yeah. is over, Matt. Yeah, holiday is over. Well, I was I was away for six weeks, so wow. I guess um, yeah, we had um, eight weeks in uh, Queensland, um, and then we um, wish I could work there, uh, and then um, we um, had Tokyo for about two weeks. So um, yeah, so I had um, a bit of time off work to like, prepare for uh, prepare for Tokyo, and uh, yeah, like how I pass the time in, in quarantine is really just do a bit of work and relax and. Um, yeah, by the time I do all that, um, day's over. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. There's obviously no pool in your room there, mate. Are you missing the swimming? <clears throat> um, yeah. Um, well, it's good to have a couple of weeks off. Um, I'll get back into it when I get out of quarantine. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, it's good to have a bit of downtime because, um, I know like leaving quarantine, I'll be out for to do stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, and, um, yeah, it's good to like n- not have, um, to follow a schedule and um, follow what we um, follow a routine day in, day out. Yeah. Well, you can enjoy uh, the, <laughs> another week of quarantine holiday. It sounds like you're almost on holiday in there, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Matt, I noticed you're wearing glasses and uh, and you said you've got a vision impairment. In fact, you're legally blind. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so I can see uh, two metres centrally. Uh, I have no, no vision um, uh, peripherally, which means um, if I'm looking straight ahead, um, it's like looking into a tunnel. Um, so okay. I can't see anything uh, left of me or right of me if I'm looking straight. Um, okay. So yeah, which is tough when I'm swimming. Um, and yeah, you have to get used to uh, watching the black line and, and kind of working out where you are because most people, I guess, could see their competitors either side of them when they're racing. But for me, I just, yeah, don't see, the, see them. I just see the black line. Um, so yeah, it's, it's difficult like when I'm doing meetings and stuff at work, it's really about increasing, uh, uh, enlarging the font and, and making sure that um, I can see things and, and that kind of thing. But this day and age, it's pretty good with technology um, yeah. to, to um, yeah, enlarge stuff and make things bigger and, and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, good, mate. Um, it's interesting um, with the swimming thing. So. How does it affect your performance? Obviously, you can't see the competitors either side of you. Um, so you just got to trust in your own abilities and swim hard along that black line and, and just believe that your best effort is going to is going to get you the result you're after. Um, Pretty or do you much. have a little sneaky look when you breathe to the left or right? Uh, no, it's just really about focusing on what I can control. Um, and I can control, I guess, uh, my my actions, uh, my thoughts and what I, what I do in the pool. Um, so if I can kind of, I guess, nail that and do that to the best of my ability, then I'll have a pretty good chance of getting in the top three or touching the wall first. Uh, and um, yeah, at the end of the day, we don't know what our competitors are doing or have done. Um, so if, yeah, we can only go on what our best is. And if we can beat our best, then um, that's a good chance of being up there um, on the podium. Nice, mate. Control what you can. <clears throat> pretty much. So on the Paralympics Australia website, Matt, it states that your goal is to be happy. Do you think that you're currently achieving that? Yeah, I think so. I think as long as you're uh, doing your best and done all the training and you know, you've done all the work, then that's pretty much all you can do. Good on you, mate. Now, Matt, if you weren't a swimmer, what sport would you love to be really good at? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Soccer or golf, maybe. They earn the most money, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, well, either of those, if you're an international soccer player, they, they go all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of those, I think, would be pretty cool. Um, and they travel to a lot of exotic places as well. So. Yeah, that would be a very good part of being, a, um, well, a golfer in, in particular. They go oh, all yeah. around the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, the other day, I noticed that your <clears throat> photo was on the outside of the Sydney Opera House. It's pretty amazing. And Aussie icon... On an Aussie icon, how did that feel? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it was, we didn't really know what was kind of was happening or anything, so it's kind of a bit of a shock when um, people were sending you messages and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, it's a shame, I guess, people weren't out, out, able to be out and about and have a look. But um, yeah, it's good. Technology is good in the way that like you could see it by uh, video and that kind of things. So, yeah, yeah it's really cool. It's a nice little surprise. You didn't know that it was happening, so that's very cool. But um, yeah. it would have been awesome to be 
to be able to to walk the the circular key and, and see the faces of all your athletes um up yeah on the, on the sails it's pretty cool yeah pretty awesome but i do believe it's it's living online somewhere so if your kids want to see it they can go and jump on and search for that and see see your face on the, the side of the brows which is awesome yeah yeah pretty cool now matt if you had the attention for the world for 10 seconds what would you say uh yeah it's a tricky one i guess um be passionate believe in yourself and enjoy what you're doing i think that's only five seconds but you can repeat that twice <laughs> no mate if you only need five seconds to say those very succinct words um but very meaningful words then that's perfect perfect use of your time i reckon <laughs> yeah uh, what's one thing that you couldn't live without matt i guess connection um i guess we've seen in kind of covid times with all the lockdowns and restrictions and stuff uh connection is a really big part um no matter if it's face to face or um online i think connection is a really big big thing and i think yeah to that would be really hard to not live with um whether it's um online or physical it's a great answer um i certainly think that people should just stop and, and think about that for a second because right now a lot of people are probably not feeling the best they're in quarantine or lockdown and, and they're missing that kind of connection but you can get it in different ways you can you can call someone you can have a zoom chat you can actually just take a step back and enjoy the connections that you've got in your own house and appreciate those more so great answer yeah matt. yeah now matt if we all lived in a zoo what animal would you be tiger i think yeah. nice nice all right aussie's keen questions so they're quick fire questions and quick answers yeah. mm -hmm. so would you rather vegemite or peanut butter as you like. Superman or Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Dogs or cats? Dog. Milo, are we having it hot or cold? Cold. Would you rather be able to fly or be invisible? Invisible. Would you prefer a pet dinosaur or a pet dragon? Dragon. Would you rather be the funniest person alive or the smartest person alive? Funniest. Nice. Well, I think they'd both be annoying. <laughs> Beach or snow? Beach. Sneakers or thongs? Sneakers. And rice bubbles or wheat bix? Wheat bix. Very good. How many wheat bix? How many wheat bix are you having, Matt? I uh, three in the morning for breakfast. In the morning. And yeah. how do you have them? With milk. Just plain with milk. How else do you have them? Well, mate, I've had some very interesting answers. You know, hot milk, cold milk, oh. um, whole or crushed. Uh, people put honey, sugar, yogurt, fruit, all sorts of things. So yeah, okay. <laughs> it's interesting. Okay, Matt. So as I mentioned before, I've got your book, which is right there. But I believe that you are reworking that into a kid-friendly version. Is that correct? Yeah, so it's going to be really simple. It's uh, basically it just talks to the concepts that I mentioned in the book throughout success and um, the framework that I use. Um, but yeah, in really simple terms, um, a lot of pictures in there. And uh, I guess uh, it, it takes the reader on a journey um, through uh, what the what success means. And, and I guess gives them some examples through, via some words and also some pictures. And uh, yeah, it, it's um, in the end stages of completion. Uh, and um, yeah, it should be out by the end of um, 2021. And um, yeah, I'm happy to share with, you, with your listeners um, when it's released. Awesome, mate. So it might make a perfect little um, Christmas present for the kids out there. And will they be able to get it just through your website? Uh, yeah, so I'll be um, be putting it on my website. And um, yeah, you can purchase it from there as, as you can purchase um, the book that you're reading as well. Nice. So the parents can go onto your website grab themselves a copy of the adult version and the kids version by the end of the year. What's your website, Matt? Uh, www.mattlevyoam.com.au Perfect. I look forward to getting that one for my kids too. <laughs> All right, thanks. 
Now, Matt, yeah. we're going to finish with one final question. Aussie's final question. <clears throat> My favorite saying that I try and teach the kids is to stay keen. So mm -hmm. I just try and teach kids to, to try lots of things, uh, find what it is that you love. And if you yeah. set your sights on something, you can go out and achieve it as long as you stay keen. Mm -hmm. So Matt, how do you stay keen? Um, I guess try and have fun in what all I, everything I do. Uh, and yeah, I think that's kind of probably how I stay keen. Uh, and yeah, and try try to enjoy what I what I'm doing. Awesome, Matt. Perfect answer, and uh, mm -hmm. and a perfect lesson for kids out there just to have fun and enjoy everything that they're doing, and success will follow. Matt, thank you so much for your time today. I wish you every success on your next chapter what is your next part of your journey um and from aussie matt stay keen thank you if you haven't already make sure you get a great up to help you hit that subscribe button that way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out speaking of new and exciting if there's a video that you'd love to see aussie do make sure you send us a message on our socials on facebook or instagram at aussie for kids We'll see you again soon, kids. And until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right, stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine.